from Indiana's business news leader. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick, presented by Elevate Ventures, Indiana University, and Lyuna. Drivers, start your engines. May in Indianapolis. A timeless tradition that uniquely links Indiana Indiana. to the world. Power. Passion. Pageantry. And economic horsepower. It's time to buckle in for Business at the Brickyard. Presented by Gainbridge and Lyuna. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick coming to you again this week from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Specifically, we are atop the Pagoda at IMS, certainly one of the most recognizable landmarks here. This week we continue our month-long Business at the Brickyard series, a look at the impact of motorsports on the Indiana economy. And we are now just one week away from the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500, and there are a number of positive signs heading into this year's race, notably ticket sales now trending ahead of last year, which at 330,000 was the largest crowd since the 350,000 that attended the 100th running in 2016. What does it mean for this year's race? For some answers, pleased to be joined by IndyCar CEO Mark Miles, also the CEO of Penske Entertainment. Mark, as always, uh, the sun is shining, the month of May uh, is here, and demand continues to head north for the Yeah, you know, we're like 16,000 seats uh, more than we've sold last year on this day. So it's really good. and. Uh, it keeps getting better. Um, as you near, uh, you know, continue to sell tickets, everybody talks about lifting the blackout and what what prospect or possibility there, any possibility, any discussions of that? Well, I think it's the thing, we, we'll know it when we see it, right? We just keep selling and we see how, um, where we end up. I'm sure it's conceivable. Uh, it's it's not a, a, a gimme putt, but, um, there's really good seats available, and we hope that people will keep uh, making plans to come out, and then, then we'll see where we are just prior to the race. When you talk about television, uh, certainly you're in the midst of uh, negotiating a new television contract, very important piece of, vi- of business for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the IndyCar Series. A lot of talk about Fox and NBC, which has the current contract being finalist. Where do things stand? How, how soon might we see a, a deal? Yeah, we're getting close. We've been working at it now for months. Um, NBC's been a great partner and helped us grow our viewership over the last six years that they have been our our primary partner. And uh, yeah, they're not alone in the hunt. So I think we're gonna know kind of which way we're gonna go in the next couple weeks and then we'll probably have to get it papered and then we'll be able to talk about it publicly. But I can just say this, we're really uh, delighted by the interest and sure that we will end up making arrangements that are even stronger for IndyCar. From a corporate sponsorship standpoint, certainly the lifeblood of, of motors, any professional sport, how would you assess the, the interest, the demand of a corporate sponsorship standpoint? Well, we've added about uh, 30% more sponsorship in the last three years, 40% if you look at revenue, and uh, that's for the series. The teams, one indication of their health is that more and more team owners want to come race IndyCar. So, we, we could have 29 cars trying to be on the grid next year, which is more than we can accommodate in terms of engines and space in the pits and some of that. So really, it's really strong demand, and I think it's uh, indicative of the fact that the underlying metrics are strong. At Penske Entertainment, you're looking at, at other opportunities uh, you know, outside of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, other development, other projects uh, that uh, tend to be rumored uh, about from time to time. Yeah, well, here in Indianapolis, at some point, we have some properties that probably have useful for the community and for us development potential. Just south across the street, where the old strip mall is, where yep. IndyCar's offices and our production uh, company is headquartered. You know, someday those 50 ish acres have a higher, better use. 
which may include our new offices, but certainly could be mixed use and commercial. And, you know, I think we, we've wanted to tend to our knitting right now and work on uh, the fundamentals of our business. And then, uh, you know, we'll talk to major developers and, and we'll learn what they think is the right timing. You know, we don't, we don't want to get ahead of the transition from here on West 16th Street to Indiana Avenue and uh, all that's going on at the east end of 16th Street with uh, 16 Tech and, and IU Health. So there's a lot of space to fill in, but the time will come when we'll be an important part of that. Yep. Mark Miles, Pinsky Entertainment CEO, thanks for joining us. Well, coming up, we get you caught up on news from around Indiana, including a major milestone in Northwest Indiana. A transformational project that has been talked about for decades is becoming a reality. Here's what's making news around Indiana. Brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors. Indiana's 21,000 Realtors. The neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. Well, as we take you around Indiana this week, travel from northwest Indiana to downtown Chicago just got a bit faster thanks to a project that has been talked about for many years but is now reality. The $650 million double tracking of the South Shore Rail Line. It is a day that has been talked about, dreamed about for decades in Northwest Indiana. And I can even say, go Cubs. It's going to matter to the Cubs. This is going to, this is going to have a positive impact from Chicago to South Bend. Completion of the $650 million double tracking of the South Shore Rail Line adds 17 miles of new track between Michigan City and Gary. 14 additional trains and reduces travel time to downtown Chicago by about 30 minutes. With this new commuter train, we're opening doors to employment, education, and entrepreneurship. Imagine the single parent, the single mom, that now will have access to the third largest economy in the world. Then we talk about Mayor Angie Nelson Deutsch in Michigan City, $600 million of development going on around the railroad track, commercial and residential. The mayor of Gary with the greater Gary theme, being able to create Broadway and Fifth and a corridor and businesses so that we can thrive in Northwest Indiana. We already have over half of a billion dollars worth of projects here in Northwest Indiana because of the expansion of commuter rail in Northwest Indiana, and there will be more to come. In fact, between the double track project and the rail line's nearly $1 billion Westlake corridor extension, which is expected to be complete in a year, an additional $2.7 billion in private investment is projected for Northwest Indiana, resulting in more than 6,000 new jobs. And a big part of the South Shore Double Track Project will be economic development projects all along the South Shore of Northwest Indiana. There are now some 1,500 new parking spaces, four bridges, and eight new platforms at stations across the region. Transportation getting from point A to point B, also making headlines in West Lafayette this week. A ceremonial first flight from West Lafayette to Chicago marked the return of commercial air service to the Purdue University Airport. Purdue and Surf Air Mobility reached a deal in December for Southern Airlines to begin scheduled service between West Lafayette and Chicago O'Hare. It marks the return of commercial air service to West Lafayette for the first time in 20 years. Ground was also broken this week for the new Amelia Earhart Terminal Building at the Purdue Airport. It's a nearly $12 million project expected to open in August of 2025. The new terminal building will be located in the Purdue Aerospace District, which is home to big name companies like Saab and Rolls-Royce. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway is all about tradition, and one big tradition here is watching the winner enjoy a bottle of milk. And now travelers can enjoy a big part of that tradition on a much bigger scale. IMS installing the big spill at Indianapolis International Airport. It's one more way to get race fans excited and for travelers to get another reminder of what May is all about here in Indianapolis. Well, certainly corporate sponsorships, a big part of the motorsports industry. Coming up next, I talk with Group 1001's Mike Nichols about uh, Gainbridge's uh, major sponsorship here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and beyond.
Welcome back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and business at the Brickyard. Corporate sponsorships are really the lifeblood of motorsports, really all professional sports and major intercollegiate athletics as well. We are just outside of the Gainbridge Suite atop the Pagoda here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. In full disclosure, Gainbridge, one of the presenting sponsors for business at the Brickyard, along with Lyuna. Gainbridge is also the presenting sponsor of the Indianapolis 500. To talk now about the strategy behind the company sports sponsorships uh, here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and in other venues, pleased to be joined by Mike Nichols. Mike is the Chief of Sponsorship Strategy and Activation at Group 1001, the parent company of uh, Gainbridge. And uh, Mike, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Uh, Gainbridge uh, is a major uh, sports uh, sponsor, Indianapolis 500, presented by Gainbridge. Talk a little bit about uh, the value that Gainbridge sees in sports sponsorships. Sure, uh, Gary. We've actually got four pillars that we look at. First of all is the awareness that it brings to the Gamebridge brand. So obviously having cars running around on the track, both here is in NASCAR as well as our name on the race, Gamebridge Fieldhouse, obviously brings a lot of awareness to the brand. Secondarily, it's what can we do with our customers, right? We want to have opportunities to entertain, bring our customers out to events so that they can enjoy the experience and maybe we can provide them here in Bogota 10 an opportunity they wouldn't otherwise get our employees, being able to engage our employees. We have employees coming out to the track this week on different days, so we cycle all the employees through so that they have an opportunity to experience it and sort of take pride in what we're doing, as well as potentially attracting prospective employees. And then finally, community. We're, a, you know, we're an Indianapolis-based company up in Zionsville, so to be able to be affiliated with the, you know, the greatest uh, motorsports event in the world, uh, it, you know, we're just proud to be a part of it. You've been in the corporate sponsorship game for a, a while now. How have you seen it? Have you seen it change, uh, e evolve? Oh, definitely. I think everybody's seeing the movement that's happening right now with women's sports. I think on average, though, I've seen numbers anywhere from 5 to 10 percent of most companies' sports sponsorship portfolio is spent in women's space. In, in Gamebridge, we're proud that over 40 percent of our sports sponsorships are spent on women's sports. So uh, we're trying to be a leader. That's really what Dan Towers is all about, is sort of if we hopefully do the right thing, I'll, others will see what we're doing and follow. So definitely there's a uh, Credible movement right now with everything that is happening in women's sports around additions of volleyball, professional hockey, and then obviously the sort of trajectory the WNBA and LPGA are, are seeing right now. Clark from way downtown. Can you characterize or uh, uh, describe the Caitlin Clark effect? <laughs> I mean, it, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. You know, we, we started having conversations with them at the end of last year and uh, sort of had the deal in place at the end of last year. But even when we had the conversations now versus what it is now, could never really um, anticipate it. And then the one thing I will say most that I did not anticipate at all was just how much, how excited the employees are about it. I was talking to somebody not even related to our department and said, hey, just sort of in your world, what are you hearing about Caitlin? And Clark and they said oh my gosh people I haven't heard from or haven't worked with in years are reaching out to me on LinkedIn and are so excited so uh, signing her has been a great source of uh, pride in the in the company Mike Nichols group 1001 thanks for joining us thanks Gary appreciate we'll you having us well certainly there has been a transformation going on just outside of the gates here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the town of Speedway Main Street uh, being transformed into an entertainment and restaurant destination for many around central Indiana. But there's one project, a hotel project, that just can't seem to get finished. Mary Rachel Redman is standing by in the town of Speedway with more on that. Mary Rachel. Well, Gary, there's no doubt about it. When it comes to the month of May, it's big time business for restaurants like here at Barbecue and Bourbon in shops all along Main Street in Speedway. We just get way busier and it's just so fun to see all the people come from different countries, states. I mean, we all know that we work all year long for May. All you have to do is walk down Main Street on any given weeknight and you can see the activity in our restaurants, our other retailers, but our, our businesses are back and I think Speedway's back. And while Main Street continues to thrive and develop, the Wilshaw Hotel, however, remains empty and unfinished. I would say this, it's mainly a factor associated with the economy. The increased cost of money, borrowing money has just significantly increased over the past three or four years, and that's made it very challenging to finance a multi-million dollar project like that. We are doing everything that we can do to hopefully see that hotel 
ultimately develop. While the future of the Wilshaw Hotel remains uncertain, Klein Hids tells me there are big plans for the roundabout right in front of it at 16th and Main. I'm not going to spill any beans on exactly what that is, but it will be a, a, an homage to our heritage, both racing, our manufacturing and industrial base. You know, we have places like Allison Transmissions that really have been here for a long time, helped found Speedway and continue to innovate and make the community a great place. And once the fanfare of May is over, the town of Speedway no longer just sits and waits 365 days for another May to get here. Today's Speedway is a town on the move with a future as bright as its past. Gary, back to you. All right, Mary Rachel, thank you. We'll be keeping an eye on that development. Well, when we come back, the IndyCar medical team has a new member who will come to every IndyCar race. Kylie Valletta explains how adding a neurologist is viewed as a game changer for the sport and keeping drivers safe. Time now for our Eye on Education, brought to you by PNC In our Bank. Eye on Education segment, big news regarding a partnership. The 16 Tech Innovation District in Indianapolis partnering with Ivy Tech Community College to create a program to grow the biopharmaceutical manufacturing workforce. Supported by Eli Lilly and Company, the Ivy Tech Innovation Training Center is designed to attract a diverse workforce for the industry. It is billed as the first effort of its kind in an ongoing strategy to support the state's biotech ecosystem. A training center expected to open sometime this summer. For the first time ever, IndyCar now has a neurologist on its medical team. Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta has that story. Kylie. Thanks, Gary. The month of May here at IMS is actually the longest that Dr. Burt Vargas will stay in one place because he'll be traveling with the IndyCar teams with a special focus on head injuries. A violent crash last summer for IndyCar driver Simon Pagano caused a concussion that's kept him out of the race car. Nearly a year later, he's still not cleared to drive. It speaks to the critical need for drivers to be in the hands of an expert. And for the first time ever, now they are. And you see their eyes kind of do this sort of thing. Sports neurologist Dr. Burt Vargas joined the IndyCar medical team just weeks ago. Money raised by Rev is paying for his position, adding might to a team already hailed as the best in the world. Having a neurologist does raise the bar, and I think we should raise the bar. I think that uh, there have been plenty of other sports organizations that have seen some true value in having a, uh, a neurologist, but not just a neurologist, but a neurologist with an expertise in sports. And that is on his resume. Vargas is on the NFL Head, Neck and Spine Committee and led NASCAR's AMR Neurotrauma Team for seven years before switching gears to IndyCar. On race day, Vargas will be at the infield care center watching every turn, ready to spot a concussion just minutes after a crash. That is a thundering, thundering blow. While some concussions are obvious. It's the people who walk in feeling normal, looking normal, that you evaluate. And when you really dig in deep into the exam, you see that they're not normal. Those are the ones that I think are more important to catch. Something broke. But it's not just the immediate injury. Highlighted by Pagano still not being cleared to race, rehab is equally important. And now, guided by Vargas. Starting the test. These high-tech goggles measure eye and vestibular function, which relates to motion and a person's balance. The goggles can help tell Vargas how well a driver is recovering from a concussion. More than any other sport, the risk of driving with a concussion is essentially the same as driving impaired. You're risking the other drivers that are on the same track with that individual. So it impacts not just, uh, not just that individual driver, but the entire field if you put someone in the car and they're not able to race at their best. During his many years in motorsports, Vargas has seen a shift among drivers. We've changed from a, a time when the athletes don't want to see the neurologist, they don't want to talk to the neurologist. And that was a massive hit. And I think now, especially since they realize that this could impact their ability to race for many, many years, that they're more inclined now to open up, to talk about signs and symptoms of concussion, and then to uh, actually follow the guidance of the care team when we recommend a eventual return to sport rehabilitation program. 
Here's an interesting piece of his background. Earlier in his career, he worked with a squadron of Air Force pilots, and he says he's finding fascinating parallels between those pilots and race car drivers. Gary, back to you. All right, Kylie, thank you uh, for showing us yet another big advancement in driver safety. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We'll be back next week and wrap up our business at the Brickyard Series race weekend in Indianapolis. We'll see you then. I'm Gary Dick. Thanks for joining us. Go out and make it a successful week.